On September 23rd, 1955, then US President Eisenhower was playing golf when he started experiencing chest pain. Now, he passed it off as indigestion, but the next morning, the pain only got worse, and later doctors confirmed he'd had a massive heart attack. At the time, this was a massive shock to Americans because very little was known about what caused heart attacks. But it was research that was only published a few years later, which suggested that saturated fats, like the fats in butter and bacon, could be to blame. The idea was that these saturated fats are high in cholesterol. Cholesterol was thought to clog arteries, and these clogged arteries are what caused heart attacks. This scared a lot of people and as a result there was a push to cut out saturated fats from your diet and replace them with a healthier alternative. Because we're concerned about reducing cholesterol, Wesson vegetable, corn and sunflower oils. With every bite you know you're eating right. These apparently healthy oils are now collectively known as seed oils, and ever since then their consumption has skyrocketed. Today, these seed oils are in literally everything, with the seed oil industry now estimated to be worth over $247 billion. But what if this idea that saturated fats were unhealthy and that these seed oils were healthy was all a lie? Seed oils are some of the worst f***ing things your body can consume. They're processed to death, they're inflammatory, and they're horrible for our health. Seed oils are a the devil. The risk of death from heart attacks or strokes went up by 22%. This is a video about seed oils, what they are, what they do to your body, but also distrust in modern science and where that stems from. I set out to answer the question, could this $247 billion food ingredient hiding in almost everything you eat really be killing you? And what I uncovered shocked me. I want to start this video by telling a story of a real patient I met a couple weeks ago. Details have, of course, been adapted and anonymized. Like Eisenhower, this was a 60-something-year-old man who'd come into hospital with chest pain. Imaging that looked at the blood vessels in his heart showed a 90% blockage in one of the major vessels that supplies the heart. So a big section of his heart was dying because it wasn't getting enough oxygen. In other words, this man, like Eisenhower at the time, was having a heart attack. After treating him and opening up that blood vessel in his heart, his pain went away and he recovered pretty well. But unlike the doctors that treated Eisenhower, and how 70 years ago, we now have a much better understanding of what had caused his heart attack in the first place. And the central story starts in the inner lining of the arteries, the endothelium. When something irritates that lining, the body sends in immune cells, which you can think of like Pac-Man. They arrive to clean up any damage. But over time, you can get a growing buildup of these immune cells. These Pac-Man pile in, as well as calcium, fat, and other debris, which over time forms a plaque. And that plaque can either grow slowly over time until it blocks the artery completely, or the outer cap of that plaque can rupture triggering a blood clot to form that suddenly blocks it all at once. An example of one of the irritants that triggers that whole process is the toxin found in tobacco, and both President Eisenhower and the patient were smokers. But another irritant is a specific cholesterol carrying molecule called LDL. Saturated fats like butter, bacon, beef, tallow and lard are all high in cholesterol, but they also increase that specific LDL cholesterol molecule in our blood. Now, when Eisenhower had his heart attack, the idea at the time was that cholesterol quite literally clogged up your arteries, which is why people were told to stay away from saturated fats. And I I even came across this frightening PSA that aired in the UK, quite literally showing cholesterol clogging up your pipes. The saturated fat can clog this pipe. Imagine what it's doing to yours. We now know, of course, this isn't quite how it works, but instead chronically high LDL in the blood can slip beneath the endothelial lining, irritate it, damage it, and accelerate that plaque formation I mentioned earlier. Now, my patient's LDL cholesterol was almost four times the normal range, and given he just had a heart attack, I wanted to understand why. When I asked about his diet, he said he'd recently switched a couple years ago to natural fats, things like butter, beef, tallow, and lard. And that was specifically after hearing that seed oils were toxic. Now, that's confusing because it's the opposite message governments had pushed after Eisenhower's heart attack. And that's one of the reasons why seed oils actually became so popular. They were marketed as the heart healthy alternative. Promise spread, get heart smart, include promise in your dietary plan. So where had this narrative flipped from seed oils being healthier to now all of a sudden being toxic? Well, let's first start by understanding what seed oils are at the molecular level. Seed oils are fats, and dietary fats fall into two broad categories, saturated and unsaturated. All dietary fats have a similar molecular structure, a glycerol backbone with three fatty acid chains. To clean things up, we don't need to show the glycerol backbone and two of the fatty acids, but still keep in mind that they're there. Saturated fats refer to when carbon atoms in one or more of the fatty acid chains are fully saturated with hydrogen atoms, meaning there are only single carbon to carbon bonds. The chains pack tightly together, which is why saturated fats like butter and lard are usually solid at room temperatures. 
On the other hand, unsaturated fats will have one or more double carbon to carbon bonds. And this double bond puts a kink in that chain. This means the chain loses out on one or more hydrogen atoms, so it's not as tightly packed together. And this is why most unsaturated fats like seed oils are liquids at room temperatures. Now, in ads from the 1980s, a big reason that these seed oils were marketed as healthier was because they were low in cholesterol. But we actually only get about 20% of our total cholesterol from the food we eat. The other 80% is made by our liver. Many people unfairly demonize cholesterol, but actually it's a very important molecule. Cholesterol is the building block for all of our cells and the precursor to important hormones like estrogen and testosterone. So for cholesterol to be transported in the blood, it needs to be packaged with a protein. And together, this makes LDL cholesterol. And that's the problem. Now, saturated fat do contain cholesterol but more worryingly they actually stop the liver from removing that LDL cholesterol in our blood so that LDL builds up infiltrates vessel walls and that drives plaque formation on the contrary studies have shown that when people switch saturated fats for unsaturated fats like seed oils the LDL cholesterol in the blood goes down I explained this to my patient to understand where his confusion stemmed from but he instead shook his head he said he'd done his own research what I was saying wasn't true and in his world saturated fats were fine but seed oils were the toxic killer and that's when it all clicked i'd been sat there for about half an hour speaking with him and it was in that moment that i realized he wasn't arguing with me but instead arguing with an entire evidence base i've been taught to trust it's just he didn't trust it he didn't trust it because of people he'd chosen to believe online the whole narrative around cholesterol ldl and red meat and saturated fat is wrong medical knowledge is under commercial control conventional doctors freak out because they have been brainwashed that all LDL is bad. What we believe in trust is now decided as much by algorithms and the content you consume online as by actual evidence. Feed oils are the root cause of literally every chronic disease. The introduction of seed oils from 1910 we see a steady rise in chronic illness. And unfortunately, this is what my patient had believed. He explained to me how we'd seen graphs which showed as seed oil consumption has risen, so had chronic diseases, all while saturated fat consumption had stayed relatively the same. But we need to be careful when drawing lines on top of each other and saying one thing causes the other. This website finds a lot of lines that overlap nicely, but no one is saying that if you name your child Johnny, they're more likely to burgle your house in New Hampshire. The website basically makes the point that correlation doesn't equal causation. So to move from lines on a graph to this cause this disease, you need a plausible mechanism, a way which seed oils are produced or behave in the body that could explain the harm. So that's where I went to next. I investigated the most popular mechanisms people claim for seed oils causing harm and how plausible they really are. Claim one, seed oils are full of toxic chemicals from an unnatural extraction process. Understandably, people describe the production of seed oils as unnatural. We simply just need to crush olives to extract the oil, but it takes about this many sunflower seeds to get one teaspoon of sunflower oil. We can't just crush the seeds up to get the oil out. So instead we use chemicals to help draw out the oil. And it's the claim that these chemicals used are harmful to our body. So we degum it with something called hexane, which is a neurotoxin. Then we take that neurotoxic degummed oil and we heat it to 405 degrees and we turn it rancid. Okay, so now you have a putrefied rancid oil. So then we have to deodorize it. So we deodorize it with sodium hydroxide, which is a known carcinogen. And then we, in some cases, will even bleach it, then bottle it, then put it on the shelf. Now, firstly, sodium hydroxide is actually not a carcinogen, but hexane is indeed a neurotoxin at high exposures. And this review highlights some of the concerns. It's like a meta study of hundreds of different studies which summarize the relevance to public health. This graph lists the health concerns at different exposure thresholds per kilogram of your body weight. 15 grams a day would be enough to kill you. Two to four grams a day would cause permanent nerve damage. And even at very low exposures, one tenth of a gram per day can affect your memory. Based on this chart, regulators have set the maximum amount of hexane allowed to be found in seed oils as 0.1 milligrams per kilo. So by rough math, I'd need to drink seven liters of oil every single day just to approach the conservative safety threshold you see on this chart, which is in itself a thousand times less than any adverse reported health effects. The bottom line is the extraction process does sound dramatic, but the tiny, tiny, tiny residual hexane is not a credible mechanism of harm for anyone that consumes seed oils. Claim two, seed oils cause chronic inflammation. Processed inflammatory oils. So to say that there's no inflammatory markers with seed oils is ludicrous. Inflammation is our body's natural response to an injury or infection. This is useful, but uncontrolled inflammation over a long period of time is not so useful and has been linked to many different health problems. We can test to see the level of inflammation in our body by looking at very specific markers in our blood. One interesting experiment used muffins to test if seed oils 
individuals cause inflammation. The researchers fed one group muffins baked with 50 grams of butter, and then another group of identical muffins but baked with 50 grams of sunflower oil. The researchers found that the sunflower oil group had lower inflammatory markers than the butter group. Now, this is of course a very small study on a very specific subset of people. And to be honest, I just wanted an excuse to buy a muffin for this video. But this review, which looked at all of the available evidence together, found that seed oils did not increase any of the inflammatory markers in our blood. And some of the studies even suggested that they might have had a beneficial effect on inflammation. So the bottom line is seed oils do not cause inflammation in our body. The third claim is specifically the omega-6 in seed oils is pro-inflammatory and damages our body. And they are highly concentrated and rich for omega-6 fats, which are pro-inflammatory. When you consume too much omega-6, it promotes chronic inflammation. Now, the internet often dumbs down omega-3, which you can get from fish oils as being anti-inflammatory and good, whereas omega-6, which you can get from seed oils as being pro-inflammatory and bad. But instead, you can think of omega-6 as the accelerator in a car. It helps initiate the inflammatory response and starts the healing process, whereas omega-3 is the brake and steering in a car. It helps resolve and then properly direct that inflammatory response. But you need both systems working together. One without the other would mean your car would either crash or not work at all. And the reviews looking at omega-6 intake and inflammation conclude there's virtually no evidence that higher dietary omega-6 raises inflammatory markers. The problem in practice is usually too little omega-3 and blaming omega-6 for chronic disease is like having your brakes fail and deciding then just to rip out the accelerator. The bottom line is omega-6 from your seed oils is not a problem at all. Now, the truth is seed oil consumption has skyrocketed and seed oils are pretty much in everything now, but that's just because they're cheap. In the capitalist food system, manufacturers use them to protect their margins. So ultimately they end up in everything. Cutting ultra processed junk food from your diet that happens to include seed oils will be beneficial for your health, but that's not because seed oils are toxic or unhealthy. It's because you've removed the ultra processed junk food in your diet that just happens to include seed oils. And this whole debate about seed oils distracts from that very message. There is irony in the health sector of America enjoying a burger and fries, broadcasting a message to millions that it's okay to eat junk food as long as it doesn't contain seed oils. She went into my house a couple of years ago and she like wiped out any seed oil. Good for her. She wants you to live for a long time. She, but the truth is switching from seed oils to beef tallow doesn't magically turn fries healthy. The 70 years separate Eisenhower's heart attack from my patients. And what's changed during that time isn't suddenly how seed oils are damaging our body, but instead who people have chosen to trust. For the record, I have no financial ties to any seed oil company or for any company for that matter. I'm guided by the science. The question I set out to answer was simple. Could a $247 billion food ingredient hiding in your cupboard really be killing you? Well, the science says no, and I trust the science. Maybe my patient's heart attack wasn't fully preventable, but one thing is clear, replacing seed oils with saturated fat didn't help him, and I really just wish he'd been better informed. My name's Esh, I'm a medical doctor, making these videos to help you cut through the noise, to show you what's real, what's hype, and what the science really says about the health claims that dominate your feed. If you want to support me in the mission to create journalistically rigorous, evidence-based medical content, then please make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can watch my previous video I made on the autism epidemic and what is really causing autism cases to skyrocket. Until next time, and see you soon.